So what do I use Keyboard Maestro for? Damn, let's start at the beginning. Menu items. Mousing, selecting, submenu selecting. All of this takes time, and it's super hard on the wrist. I started off in the mid 90s using Quick Keys. It's another macro program, and I used it mainly for menu items. It was a revelation, but let's just say I wasn't a programmer. I was barely an audio editor. At some point, Apple upgraded to OS whatever's next, and Quick Keys wasn't ready for it. Since I was already semi dependent, I started looking around for something that was ready for it. Enter Keyboard Maestro. 36 bucks, well maintained, often updated, Mac only, but no problem. It took me maybe an hour to figure out how to recreate my little stable of macros in Keyboard Maestro. My go to plugins, all on hotkeys, show and hide the clip names and timestamps. I love them, but they get in the way of the waveforms. The color palette, and other things Pro Tools doesn't have keystrokes for or just putting Pro Tools keystrokes where I wanted them. The Keyboard Maestro interface and workflow made me want to dive in. What else could I do that would help get me home at a reasonable hour? Isotope. I don't know many people who aren't using this on a regular basis. Isotope Connect is a menu item, so done. But pressing the buttons, here's where it gets interesting. Keyboard Maestro will find an image on the screen and click the mouse relative to that image. So I have it click the send button. That gets me into Isotope. Then in Isotope, once I'm done doing what I have to do, I have another macro that clicks the send back button, waits for Pro Tools to be active, clicks the render button, rolls back two seconds and puts me into play. Keyboard Maestro also has a button action, which I've started using. It works some of the time, but not always, so I rely on finding the image when I can't use the button. I do a lot of ADR work, so I'd better cover ADR spotting. Around the same time I discovered Keyboard Maestro, I made the switch from Spot Studio to ADR Manager. ADR Manager came with an Apple script that would grab the in and out times from Pro Tools and open a new ADR queue. It was crazy to use it without this, and I knew Keyboard Maestro could fire an Apple script. So I made a macro. Well, it didn't take long to realize that every queue you make has to be entered, and then you have to keep working. I didn't see any reason why I should be doing this manually. So I made a hotkey to press the OK button. That entered the queue. Then it would save my ADR manager project, put me back into Pro Tools, set marker 999, collapse the selection, and put me into play so I can listen for the next cue. Yeah. Now let's talk about marker 999 for a second. This is an indispensable editing tool for me. In Pro Tools, you set it on the keypad by dot zero, enter, enter, and recall by dot zero dot. Super easy. And for years I've used this as the cutting edge of whatever I'm editing, or just to keep my place in the session. If I get lost, it'll always bring me back to where I was. On the laptop, because there's no keypad, I mimic this by using the control down arrow to set marker 999, and control up arrow to recall it. It's kind of like using those arrows to set the Pro Tools cursor in and out. As a rule, I like to write macros that mimic the way Pro Tools works, because it's just easier to think about. And while I'm digressing, let's talk about ergonomics for a second. My right hand is always busy with the trackball or trackpad doing the selecting, so I try to put the most used keystrokes under my left hand. That way no hand gets too busy, and they kind of switch off, which is efficient. And because Keyboard Maestro is organized into groups of macros that are only active in the applications you tell them to be, and you can turn them on and off anyway, I can use the same keystrokes over and over and over again in different groups. All right, Foley spotting. Several years ago, I was working on an animated film for which I had to spot Foley stupidly fast. Again, enter Keyboard Maestro. Now I spot Foley, like most people do, by making a session with dummy group clips named with the surface and shoe. 
or as props. So I set up my Foley spotting like this. I use the function keys to take my selection and make the dummy clip. And then they'd name it FS underscore and then the surface that I chose depending on the function key. Then option one through nine would add the shoe. Control option one through nine would add any kind of modifiers like grit or wet. Then for props, I used option A to open a group clip that was ready to be named whatever. I put a set of P-Touch labels on my laptop as a cheat sheet for this. It's still there. And what about spotting stuff like anything? Because you can use keystrokes to grab numbers from Pro Tools, you can make lists in Google Sheets and text edit or whatever. Keyboard Maestro has named clipboards. I think you can have like 99, but maybe, maybe it's infinite, I don't know. They're like regular clipboards you can copy and paste from, but you can copy a bunch of things to different clipboards and then paste from those different clipboards into different other places. So I made an in time and an out time, a Q name, other things, which make it easy to grab an in and out from Pro Tools and then put them in a Google Sheet. This could also work in reverse. You could grab numbers from a Google Sheet names or dialogue too, and make Pro Tools cues or markers out of them. Nice for doing things like scene slugs. Keyboard Maestro also works on the network, so you can get the Keyboard Maestro control app for your iPhone and use it to trigger macros from your iPhone. The interface isn't super slick, but the functionality is there. Any macro group that's active in Keyboard Maestro will show up on the list. So you could make a macro group for notes and give it to the clients. While you're playing down, they can mark things into a Google Doc by timecode from their phones in the back of the room. You can set a few up with specific text, ADR, music, dialogue, louder, softer, whatever. And using named clipboards, they can go into a doc with timecode without stopping play. You can record Foley or VoiceOver on your own without having to be right next to Pro Tools. Trust me, I've done this. Or just a very simple roll back and play for when you're feeling lazy. It's kind of whatever you can think of. And you can do it off your phone. There's a couple of things I do for mixing and pre-mixing. Trigger window configurations. I use an Apple script for changing the size and location of the video window. It's pretty useful for cutting ADR on the laptop because I can rough things in against a thumbnail in the bottom left corner of the screen. And then when I really need to look at sync, I can make it full frame. I used to be able to do this with window configurations, but Pro Tools broke it and they haven't fixed it yet. I also made a half speed pan holder, which will put you into half speed play and then click and hold the panner until you hit the space bar. That way you don't have to press with your finger while you're panning on a trackpad or even on a trackball. You know, for those times when you don't have a control surface handy. Copy pan, copy all automation. Who wants to go looking for these things in menus? MIDI? Surprise, Keyboard Maestro will send and receive MIDI. My first big use for this was making a little MIDI keyboard out of the function keys that could be used for sound design on the laptop at the coffee shop. F6 is C4, and then it spreads out in fourths for a few keys and then octaves near the end. Combinations of modifiers control the velocity. You're not going to get any concertos out of this, but it's enough for sound effects. You can also use MIDI to trigger Keyboard Maestro macros. So figure out exactly which Pro Tools function you want to fire with your foot switch and go for it. On the laptop, I needed an expanded keyboard substitute. It's pretty tough to run Pro Tools without having a keypad. I made substitute keystrokes for the keypad specific functions that are sorely missing. So, enter for markers is control enter. Control backslash gets me into timecode entry. The angle brackets, or really the comma and the period, work for nudging, and then I have them work with control option and command in the same way that the keypad plus and minus do in a real keyboard. Podcast editing. The economics of podcast require that you burn through material at a superhuman pace. It's simple editing, but you have to do a ton of it. 
so I developed a little system. Usually what you get is a couple of mics and one long take. I started lining up the mics on edit group tracks and stripping silence on each. After that I boiled it down to about four function keys. F1 turns the group on and off. Most of the time you're working with the whole track, but sometimes you need to get into the individual mics to do things like isotope. F2 selects to the end, so I can do pull-ups. F3 deletes whatever is selected, which is usually a breath or an um or some errant fragment of conversation, and then pulls up the track, rolls back two seconds, and puts me into play. F4 does the same thing as F3, but without the playback, so I can do look-ahead editing during playback, or grab a couple of things at the same time when I'm stopped. This is all evolving a little bit now because there are folder tracks. Putting the mics in a folder track kind of negates the need for the F1 group toggle. F2 and F4 now select the folder before their cut pull-up business, but the idea is the same. With the nudge set on one frame, then those M comma period slash keys are just about right for making the timing changes that you need to do in a podcast. Well, that's pretty much the big stuff. I always feel like I've barely scratched the surface with Keyboard Maestro. My programming ability is getting a little bit better, but there's always new stuff, and there's plenty to figure out. Just take a look at all these available actions. There's a lot of good new ideas floating around in the Keyboard Maestro for Pro Tools Facebook group. There are some monster programmers in there, and they've been all too happy to share stuff. And just because we're talking about Pro Tools doesn't mean that it doesn't work with like every other program on your Mac. So you could use your foot pedal to open system preferences or fire off some cat videos to Instagram or something. Well, that's about all I got. I hope you found it useful and feel free to reach out in the comments.